Hi guys, this is Bill from Spencer1984.com, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the new Dukes of Hazard General Lee Snap It Kit from MPC. This is part of their Silver Screen Machine series, which has recently included reissue of their Knight Rider kit and the Jack Reacher Chevelle. You see here on the front of the box, they've got a nice illustration of the charger, and that's repeated on both ends. Here on the top of the box, they've got a profile picture of the finished model, which is a nice throwback to what the old MPC box art had on it. And here on the bottom, they've got the rear view, chassis, and interior shots. And you can see that they've been very careful about keeping the flag off of everything here, both illustration and photograph. That's been a bit of controversy going around lately, but uh, that is something that Round 2 has been kind of consistent with lately on their most recent issue of the General Lee kit they actually blocked off the flag entirely from the roof even though they had a shot that should have clearly shown it. So this is at least a slightly more subtle way of doing it. Here on the back we've got all the legalese plus the kit breakdown and you can see that they do have the decal sheet here but the flag has been blanked off from that as well. So that's it for the box. Let's get it open and see what the actual kit looks like. First we've got the new body here, and you can see the hood is now molded in place. Overall the casting does not look too bad, although it's got some soft spots like here around the rear window. The trim is not incredibly sharp. There's still a pretty sharp break line between the roof pillar and the fender. And you can see that it now has openings for the CB antenna and the fuel cap there. Okay. Here on the bottom it's got the mount points now and the front balance is molded as part of the body and folded in to get it to fit inside the box. We've got one piece of glass that does the windshield, wing windows, and rear window and separately molded taillights. Chrome tree has the rear bumper, the vector wheels, gear selector, license plate, the fuel cap, CB antenna, and the combined grill shell and front bumper. And you can see there they've got holes in the front bumper now for mounting the grill guard. Here we've got the interior bucket with the center console and the rear seat molded in place. Door detailing is still pretty shallow here, but not really too surprising for the uh, traditional bucket style interior. The front seats still have seat belts molded into them, which is a little unfortunate. It'd be nice if they left those off. Here we've got the dashboard, which is pretty sharply detailed, although there's no uh, gauge faces or other detailing in there at all. It does have a notch for the CB radio and the steering wheel which has actual openings in the spokes that's kind of a nice touch there here we've got the single piece roll bar the front grills which for some reason are still the old MPC style with the kind of rounded faces instead of the vertical electric shaver of the actual 69 charger inner wheels CB radio and the grill guard. And unfortunately, the grill guard still looks a little puny here. Would have been nice if they'd kind of beefed that up to something that matched what came in the actual TV movie car better. Here's the one piece chassis, the exhausts and the drivetrain all molded into place. Detailing on this actually looks okay. Uh, not stellar, but certainly passable. It's got some uh, decent detailing around the edges. Got four vinyl Goodyear tires. And the TV car generally wore BF Goodrich, but these are still nice tires to have in your parts box if nothing else. And the two metal axles. The instructions are basically just a few exploded views of the car with arrows showing where things should be put. Nothing really special there. 
And finally, the markings. So yes, they do include the flag, and they actually include two complete sheets. The top one is a traditional water slide decal sheet, and the bottom one is a peel and stick. On the plus side, it looks like they finally got the General Lee lettering in the right color, although for the classic car it's still the wrong font. And the flag, uh, it looks okay, but the stars look awfully heavy to me. So that might be something that you're still better off going to an aftermarket supply. So I wanted to take a look at it compared to some other 69 Charger offerings. This is the new kit. This is the most recent version of the glue together kit with the corrected rear window. This is the original MPC kit with the Charger 500 rear window in it. And just for grins, this is the Revell 69 Charger kit. And now looking at these side by side, there are a lot of similarities among the three MPC offerings. Start by looking at the two most recent versions. Although they're not exact, there's a lot of very unusual similarities here. Like for example, if you look at the way that the roof pillar and the rear fender come together, I mentioned when I was looking at the body that that seems like a much sharper break than I was expecting. They look identical between the old glue kit and the new snap it kit. They also have that kind of weird jog in the trunk line where it was corrected from the 500 charger. They both also have incredibly tiny door handles, though the side vents have clearly been retooled somewhat. Also, if you can see here, the marker lights on the corners of both look identical. Take a look at the grills, they are different. They've got a slightly different pattern in them, so these were not just a leftover item. And they're slightly different shaped. But again, they're still kind of wrong for what a 69 Charger grill, especially the General Lee, should look like. Considering that they got it right on the box art, that's kind of unfortunate right there. The dashboards are definitely all new toolings, so at least that's kind of a nice touch. The detail is much sharper on the new one, and although there's no gauge detailing, uh, that's a, a detail that you can always get from an aftermarket supplier or make your own gauge faces, and they'll look sharper than pretty much anything that you could paint on there anyway. Now looking at the chrome components, the wheels have definitely been retooled. The new ones are smaller and open and have much sharper detailing. They generally look much better. They're still a little flat to my eye, but nothing that's too bad. Uh, and once they're painted up, they should look okay. The visible sides of the rear bumpers look identical. They're the same width. They've got the same breakdown. The grills and front bumper, though, they look way too close to be anything other than just a mild retooling of what we've been getting for years. They still have the unnecessarily sharp edges. They still have the same license plate bracket there at the bottom. Looks like the biggest difference is on the new kit, they flattened the areas where the grills fit and added holes to mount them. The other thing that's kind of strange about the body is one of the things that MPC has always had kind of strange is that the leading edge of the hood has had a sharp upper edge. 
It's where the kit was tooled many, many years ago to fit the uh, Charger Daytona nose. And for some reason, the new kit still has a sharp upper edge on it. Now, they're very much not the same hood. The new one has smaller scallops on it, and they're much more sharply defined. The center brake looks much better. And you can see other differences, like the way that the windshield wipers are mounted. On the new kit, it's further in the cowl vent than it was in the old kit. And last thing, comparing the bodies to each other, the new snap it kit is on the top and the most recent issue of the glue kit is on the bottom. They look very, very, very similar. Like more similar than I would expect for two kits that happen to be covering the same subject. You can see some differences. The door scallops look different and there are the slightly different size and shape to the marker lights, but overall, I'm pretty sure that this isn't exactly an all-new tooling so much as an extensive retooling of the classic glue kit. And so with all that, uh, looking at it and comparing it to what we've gotten before, Round 2 has definitely done a lot of good cleanup work. Some of the things that they've got going on here still aren't quite right. The hood scallops look a little too deep and a little too narrow, and that uh, C-pillar transition still bugs me. But overall, it's really not a bad little kit. I'm going to be building it up in the next week or so, and uh, next week I'll have an update on how it all went together. If they're retooling or new tooling of parts was worthwhile. But for right now, uh, I'm going to call this one maybe a good introductory kit, but for those who really want a good charger kit, you're going to have to stick with the Revell for now. Thanks for watching.